Hello everyone, uh, this lecture is for uh, term 7 students uh, in uh, Process Engineering Department Memorial University. I am a little bit uh, late in recording it. And uh, what we are going to work on, we are going to uh, look on how we tune uh, controllers uh, in HISIS, S-Pin HISIS. These are uh, some of the steps in the dynamic simulation that we have already worked. Uh, you can look on uh, from lecture 5 to 10 I believe and the recorded videos are also available. Today we are going to work on uh, how we tune the controller which was an advanced uh, level step. Now before I go into the tuning and what are the procedure I just want to explain to you about uh, the controllers. What are the controllers? How we deal with them? So let me make some space here. So when I say that uh, I want to tune a PID controller. So in the PID controller, let me explain to you first uh, what is meant by controller itself. So for example, you want to control uh, temperature in your uh, tank. We are specifically talking about uh, chemical and process industries. Uh, so this first uh, method is that uh, you adjust uh, or provide a set point for the temperature and then you wait for the outcome. For example, I want to have the set point of 25 degrees Celsius. I increase the temperature then I see how much is the output. So the output is let's say 27 degrees Celsius. Because I have uh, output more so I can adjust the set point and then look on what is the output temperature uh, outside the tank let's say. The second method uh, is uh, more appropriate in which we have this uh, same parameter. We have the temperature here and uh, we are going to provide it a set point just like we were doing before in this system. This is my set point. Now what we do, we take this uh, output, this is my output. Uh, temperature let's see. we take this output temperature and we send it uh, back to our this system here and what it does for example it is the 27 degrees Celsius and my set point is uh, 25 degrees Celsius so it will uh, develop an error it will find an error in my system which is of course uh, 2 degrees Celsius error and it will send back uh, to the temperature again. So this is kind of the loop uh, formation here. Now this one is uh, specifically we called it as a feedback controller. Feedback uh, controller. So the error uh, basically calculated the temperature difference between the output and our set put which is our input and then uh, adjusted the system in order to have the same set point uh, as the output. What is our objective here? We want to have a 25 degree centigrade uh, this temperature. But the temperature was more than 27. This means uh, we need to reduce the input of our heater here. So this uh, error is uh, what is uh, we call as a controller. We call it as a controller. Now the controllers uh, they comes in uh, proportional, integral and derivative controller. In the next slide I will explain you more about these one. Just keep in mind what is our objective here. Our objective is we want to make our error as a zero. Now this could be the, uh, I am using the example of temperature, this could be the height of the liquid in the tank, it could be any other process variable. So what is our objective uh, you, uh, of using these controllers? We want to minimize our error with the passage of the time. So this is our objective is if I take error on my vertical axis and horizontal is my time. So I want to reduce the error up to a zero point. Now what is the PID controller uh, itself? Let me delete this. Now PID controller 
if I say that it is a PID controller, this is the combination of three things. One is called as the proportional, proportional. The second one is the integral. The third one is the derivative controller. Derivative controller. The proportional controller is something that will take us uh, where we want to go. So just keep this in mind where we want to go. The integral controller it is uh, used when we want to reach faster up to that point. Reach uh, faster. The derivative controller is used when we want to make closer to our set point. Now let me elaborate all of this and I will choose a different color now. So what I meant to say here, for example, this is uh, my graph here, this is my time on x-axis and this is my temperature, let's say the example that we are taking. And if I set a point here, again I will take the example of uh, 25 degrees Celsius. So I want a constant temperature with respect to time here. So this should be parallel to my time. There's no change, vertical change in this uh, set point. So what will happen? The process, uh, once you set up this uh, point, the process will uh, take a little bit time and it will start to approach that time gradually. Now this is how we are reaching to that point that is uh, through a proportional controller. However, the problem with the proportional controller is it is not instantaneous and it takes time to hit and it does not stop up to this point. Because it does not stop, what will happen? It will overshoot this point. For example, it is uh, reaching to the point of uh, 27 degrees Celsius. Then the proportional controller will re realize that uh, it has exceeded the set point, it will try to minimize it and bring it to 25 degrees Celsius. Again, the proportional controller cannot uh, settle this and this uh, phenomena will go below the 25 degrees Celsius, let's say 23, which is again not the required temperature and it will try to oscillate. Okay, so that is what is the proportional controller. Now this thing in the proportional controller is what we called as uh, overshooting, overshooting. There could be undershooting as well. For that one, uh, let me take this example. For example, this is my set point of uh, 25 degrees Celsius and uh, this is my action coming in. It did not reach up to my 25 uh, point and it is still below that and it, it start to oscillate up to this point. This is what we called as the undershooting. Now where does the integral and uh, the derivative controls comes? If we want to reach uh, up to this point, so this is my first point where it is uh, taking this time here. If you want to reach uh, faster, that is where we use the integral controller. And the derivative controller is used when we want to make it uh, closer to our set point. For example, this will keep oscillating. If you use the in derivative controller, it will uh, definitely give you a point where we can have our set point of 25 degrees Celsius. Otherwise, it will keep moving uh, up to that point. So I can say that for uh, my proportional controller, I will have the speed of response, uh, speed of uh, response high, because as you can see that uh, once I started to move from here, it uh, it was reached there. So the speed of the response is high. However, it did give us an error. It did not reach up to the required level that we needed for here. This was our set point here. Now, in terms of the integral controller, it will, of course, uh, reduce our, uh, it will reduce our overshoot issue. It 
will reduce our overshoot issue. It will also reduce our error, which is the difference between the set point and the process variable point. However, it will increase uh, the settling time. The system will take more time to settle with the integral controller. So, the settling time is increased. Whereas, in terms of the derivative controller, in terms of the derivative controller, we can uh, reduce our settling time. I hope uh, this is clear. Can reduce uh, settling time. Now, we one thing you need to keep in mind: the derivative controller we cannot use uh, alone because it works uh, on the rate of the change, which could be big or small. The rate of the change, if if the rate of the change is a constant, we will always get a constant error. I will explain this uh, more in the next slide. So let's uh, work on this. So I have a proportional controller, I have integral controller, and I have a derivative controller. So what I, what I was referring in my previous slide, we cannot use uh, the proportion uh, derivative controller only because in the derivative it takes uh, as a derivative of the error. If your error is the constant is a constant the derivative of uh, this with respect to the time let's say it will always uh, come as a zero even if there will be an error which means there will be difference between the set point and the process variable but the derivative controller will not work why because it will assume that uh, it has uh, resolved uh, the error which is uh, practically not the case now in terms of uh, proportional controller as i mentioned you we look on uh, the kp which is uh, in the which is the basically the gain gain of the proportional controller in the integral controller we take the ki and we use it 1 over s in the derivative controller we have the kd and this is the derivative controller this is my integral controller now what happened all these uh, three are combined and we get uh, one output that is uh, what uh, is called as the output of the controller output of controller So basically, proportional integral and derivative controller, it described how it treats uh, the errors. In the proportional controller, just keep in mind again, it takes you where you want to go. In the integral, it uh, reaches quickly and in the derivative, it makes you closer to your set point. Now, these uh, three k's, kp, ki and kd, these are uh, what we call as uh, gains of the controller gains of a PID controller and this is what our objective is how we find uh, these uh, gains these gains can be adjusted or tuned in order to have a particular set point in our system one thing just uh, keep in mind this uh, KP the proportional controller it works uh, on the present condition what is the present condition in your system? The integral controller, it uh, takes uh, your past uh, data and it uh, try to remove all the errors based on the accumulated data, which will be the accumulated over time. And uh, the derivative controller, it works on the future. Basically, the derivative controller, it is the opposite to the integral where it uh, looks at the future errors and it uh, presents us uh, the solutions how we can remove those errors which can happen in the future. There are some uh, rules of uh, thumbs that we can assign uh, these values. Again, these are rule of thumbs, so you should not much rely on these ones. So, if you have a fast uh, 
system for example let's take the example of the flow flow rate so for a proportional controller you need to reduce uh, the value of your gain let's uh, give it a name of the kp if it is uh, too high then you will have the cyclic system so by that i meant to say it will be keep moving like this if you have uh, a very high kp value and the integral value you should increase your ki for a fast system and uh, the derivative controller we don't need uh, for the fast flow system only pi will be enough that will be called as a pi controller instead of the pid controller now in case of the slow system just like uh, the temperature for example we will take uh, for uh, p the kp should be high and for integral controller your ki uh, should be lesser than p lesser than p and the derivative that should be lesser than i so these are some rules of thumbs uh, so now let me take you to our actual objective so we are looking to work on uh, designing uh, the control system so the tuning of the controller is nothing this is just uh, how we find out these uh, values of the k p k i and the k d which is for the derivative controllers so basically what we are going to do we are going to find out uh, by tuning of the controller the values of the kp ki and kd so let's uh, go to this uh, sheet here now the first step in uh, tuning of the controller in hisis is you need to disconnect the controller to make it an open loop controller Practically what we do when we uh, want to make this uh, an open loop controller we go to the field and we disconnect the controller from the systems and we manually change our valves opening however in the high uh, we need to make it an open loop controller I will show you how we work on that the second step is we need to introduce our step change or the disturbance and record uh, the response of the system which will be in terms of the data i will show you how we can ask hisis to record our data it the data will be mainly the time the control variable the set point and the controlled uh, variables which are recorded in hisis the third step is we need to develop our uh, process uh, reaction curve this is uh, the most important objective in tuning the controllers in HISIS and then using the process reaction curve we need to find out what are our different parameters three parameters that we need to find out the first is our uh, response time the second one is the dead time which is also called as the transportation lag and the third one is the process gain which is called as the ultimate change in output divided by the size of the step input and the last step is we validate our parameters by validation it meant to say that uh, you find out your parameters of the controller and then put into your hisis again and uh, make it as a closed loop so just keep in mind this should be a closed loop uh, when you are validating your parameter by that uh, i meant to say you will not keep it on the manual mode just like you were doing in step number one it should be an auto mode we will do this example uh, in just a few minutes once you have these uh, parameters available we have a couple of methods that we can use to find out uh, our tuning parameter the first uh, very famous is the ziegler nicholas method and then we have the cohen con method and itae method once you have these find out these parameters which is uh, our tau response time we have the dead time coming from step number d and you have the gain coming in from step number d as well once you have these parameters find out you just plug into this and you find the value of your controller gain uh, this is your kc which is for proportional controller and again uh, when you have the alpha available you can find out the tau and the tau d using these empirical relationships 
Now, if we go uh, more detail into the Ziegler Nicholas method, so these are the steps uh, that you can use on for the controller. If you are uh, having uh, a proportional controller only, so this is my proportional controller, then what you need to do, you need to use uh, your process gain, tar relationships, and your alpha relationship in order to find the KC. If it is the proportional uh, integral controller, then there will be no uh, derivative of course because we are using the pi controller then you use uh, these relationships here you know to find out the tau which is the integral time constant that we will use uh, in our controller and if you want to make it as a pid controller then you need to use these empirical relationships with the values of your response time dead time and process gain and this is what will give us a pid controller now before I go into this example, the next uh, on next page of the workbook, we have uh, this example that we will work in HiSys. I just want to explain you some point about uh, my step number. Uh, yes, this uh, process uh, reaction curve. So let's go to our presentation here. Just uh, pay attention here. Whatever I'm doing here, we will do it in the HiSys as well, of course. So, for example, this is uh, my process, uh, this is my set point, let's say. As a first step uh, of uh, the tuning, you need to provide a step change. By that, I meant to say you need to change the output. It will go up to one point and then it will uh, come here. This is uh, the curve for my input. Okay. Now, because I'm changing my input, there will be some effect on my output. So, let's say uh, draw exactly under this curve. So, I will have, uh, let's say, this here. Now, the effect on uh, output will take a little bit uh, time delay and then it will start to gain that point that you want the system to have for example i want a set point of 25 degrees celsius now again on the x-axis i have the time here and let's say this is my temperature i should have drawn it in a nice way okay so this uh, curve what we need to do once we have this uh, this curve is what we call as a uh, process reaction curve this is called as a process reaction curve i will show you in high says how we gain this curve so what we need to do once we have this curve available you just uh, draw a tangent on this line my tool is not uh, good enough to show you but um, i'm sure it can give you some idea what I'm saying here. So I will draw a tangent on my curve and this is the point where I have achieved my steady state. Now let's come here. Let's choose some different color. So if I go up to this point, this is the difference uh, which is coming. So this time is coming when I change my input and this is the time when the system started to respond. This is what is uh, called as a dead time. This is called as the process dead time. Dead time. It is indicated as alpha. In some of the literature, you will see they indicate it as a TD. So we need to find out uh, this uh, time from the system. And let's uh, do it here. So we have the process uh, dead time. And the second uh, one is, we need to find out what is the process uh, time constant. Process time constant. How we work on process time constant? We need to use the formula here. Uh, we represent process time constant as a tau. So the tau is uh, basically, that is equals to time where output uh, reach 
63.2% of uh, total change and we subtract uh, the time when it start to change start to change let me take some ballpark number and explain you this one because it is very important and then we can go back to our high sales for sure and the last uh, the third one is uh, of course our process gain this is my process gain so uh, let me delete these And I think I should draw a curve again. So let's work on this. So this is uh, what is my dead time, which is uh, alpha. So for example, I'm starting from zero and I'm reaching a value of, uh, let's say 10 minutes. Okay, so my alpha will be this uh, distance here which is uh, 10 minus 0 which is the 10 minutes over here I want to find out what is my time where the output reach 63.2 percent of the total change so let's say this is my curve that I draw and uh, over this curve what I want to find out how much time it will take uh, for output to reach 63.2 percent of the total change now for that one first i need to find out how much is the total change in my system for example i am starting this uh, at the value of let's say 30 and this is reaching at the value of uh, let's say 37 now let's uh, delete this instead of uh, making the new one so let's come back uh, here so what I am saying that what is my total change here my total change that is equals to this is my starting from 30 and reaching to 37 so it will be always a positive number so that is my 7 is this now this distance is my 7 here and I want to see 63 percent of this so what I will do I will say that what is the 63 percent of uh, 7 which is turns out to be 4.424 what will be my time where the output reach 63.2 uh, percent i need to find out first what is the y axis or the temperature corresponding to that in order to do that what i will do i will add uh, the starting value starting value into my this value which is 4.424 so my starting value is it is starting from 30 it is starting from 30 plus 4.424 which turns out to be 34.424 and uh, right now of course the units are coming in terms of uh, minute for this this is the degree Celsius and this is the minutes as well so this is a uh, uh, oh sorry this one should be degree celsius and this one is also degree celsius so i need to go on let's take another one color so i need to go up to 34.424 that will be 63 percent of the total change and then i come back to my process variable and find out what is my time here i hope uh, this is clear so this is uh, let's say i give it a uh, number of 15 minutes we will see in high seas how much we get these times so this is uh, the corresponding time from the process uh, reaction curve for this one is 15 minutes 
Now I can use this uh, formula and find out my tor. So my tor will be this is my 15 minutes minus what is the time where this the change start to happen. As you can see that from my process reaction curve is starting from the 10 minutes so I subtract 10. So that is uh, how I find out uh, my tor which is the time constant. So once you have your uh, alpha available that time and your uh, time constant which is 5 minutes in my case. The next step is we find out what is our k here. So the k is very easy. The k formula is the change in output and we divide it by the change in the input. As you can see that the change in output was uh, 7 here and the step change, uh, let's say I give it a change, step change of 10. So my k value is uh, 0.7 here. So once we have all these uh, three parameters available, we can go back uh, to our empirical relationships over here and we can just uh, plug in the values in order to find out what will be the outputs of our controllers. So let's uh, delete this and we can start in HISIS now. So this example uh, that uh, we have done in lecture 4 or 5 I believe, the video lecture was recorded, you can have a look on that. So what was happening here, this is a flash drum where we have, uh, this is the flash drum where we have the feed coming into the system. We have the vapor outlet and the liquid outlet. We applied our uh, valve on the liquid. We applied our valve on the vapor. These are the conditions of the feed. It is entering at the pressure of 20 psi. The temperature is 80 degrees Celsius. The mass flow rate is 5 kg per second. This is the composition of your feed. It has acetone, 2 propanol, and the water. And the operating uh, pressure of the drum is 14.7 PSIA and the pressure of the liquid and the vapor at the downstream is 9.7 PSIA. Now this solution I make it available on D2L because we have done this already. I just uh, don't want to spend more time in this uh, recording. So this is the HISIS simulation of this uh, system that we have. Now let me... Uh, make it uh, more visible now okay so what is uh, our system here again as i explained you we have the flash trim we have the feed coming in we have uh, the controllers associated uh, with each and every valve this is uh, the drum pc here if you look on uh, this one these are uh, go to the parameters now one thing i want to mention how does the hysis knows if you are using a proportional controller or if you are using proportional integral controller or if you are using a PID controller. Look at these uh, values here. ISIS has uh, these uh, values provided. Now in the current form, this uh, controller is only the proportional controller. Why? Because I have given the value of the proportional controller, which is the KC here, the gain of the controller. If I have uh, the integral time value given, this will become a PI controller. If I have the value of the PTD, derivative time given this means it will be a proportional integral derivative controller so this is how the hysis knows that what kind of the controller do you need from hysis so again if it is only kc it will be a proportional controller if it is the value of the kc and the ti given here it will be proportional integral controller if it is the value of the proportional integral and you give the value of the td it will make it a pid controller this is the system that we have. I have already done this. There is nothing much uh, difference than lecture 5 or 4, I believe. You can have a look on that lecture and develop this. Now, what we are going to do, uh, we need to open uh, the face plate. So, I click on this. I bring in my face plate into the system. Let's keep it here. We can close it. Open uh, this uh, controller. Bring the face plate. And we can open this, uh, close this, sorry. And then we can open this one and get the face plate for this one as well. So, 
what we have done so far we have uh, developed uh, our face plates uh, for the controllers and i'm going to tune only this uh, feed controller just keep in mind i'm not doing uh, the drum uh, pc or and the drum lc you can work on the same procedure the procedure remain the same because i want to work on this so let's open its uh, strip chart so you go here go to strip ch chart and just click on this create strip chart go here and display so this is what is the strip chart of uh, my input uh, controller here i can close this uh, windows here now let's uh, go to higher our sheet here and uh, do them step uh, by step so my first objective is i need to disconnect the controller to make it an open loop the second is I will introduce a step change disturbance and then record the data in HiSys. And then we can come back to step C, D and E. I'm going to do step number A and B together. So you go to your HiSys here. These are my feed uh, strip chart for my feed controller which I want to adjust. Uh, let me take this over here. Now, before we move into this, uh, let's go to strip charts here and I want to show you something. I'm working on uh, a strip chart which has the definition of FED FC DL3. It is the name of the strip chart given by HiSys. You can also change it. What I'm going to do, I'm going to make its uh, data as a 2000 points. So what it will do, uh, it will uh, record 2000 data points uh, uh, for this controller. You can also change the sample interval, but I will leave it uh, by default, whatever it is. And now let's get, get back to the solver here. Now again, keep in mind, I'm only doing, uh, I'm only tuning my feed uh, FC controller. I'm not tuning the rest of the two. However, the procedure will remain the same. So what we need to do, we need to put all of them into an auto mode before we run our simulation and uh, once you have all the controller on auto mode you go to your dynamics here and click on the integral here i can reduce uh, the time of my response one acceleration is too fast let's make it 0 0.01 and i have set up an endpoint of uh, 60 minutes you can uh, change it uh, up to any level just make sure it is uh, up to that point where we have the steady state condition established I will show you how it established uh, in a minute and just uh, click on the reset and it will bring everything on the zero and now we can close this now I'm going to run my dynamic simulation but again I want to go back and show you I need to disconnect connect to my controller keep in mind make it an open loop and the second is I need to introduce a step change disturbance so I'm ready with my simulation here what I will do I go to the, my dynamics here and I will start uh, my simulation here. Let's uh, move it up to this point. And right click here, we need to bring all axes. Now, as you can see that this green, it is indicating my process variable for this feed controller. As you can see that this is my PV here, 17.7. And this is my output level, which is at the point is 60% uh, output uh, is open here. And this is uh, my set point. According to my step number one, I need to make it an open loop. How we do it? Just go to your uh, controller, which you want to tune and make it on the manual. The time I will make it at the manual, it will allow me to change the output. Now look at this. Now you can see that output has been highlighted. Now this is where I can change my output. Let's make it uh, as a step change, which means I can add a 10, let's say. You can also add 5. So let's uh, make it as a 70. Just keep in mind all the other controllers, they are on the auto mode. I press 70 and hit enter. Now look at this here now. There is a sudden change in my output because I changed it to 70. And with a very minute delay, there is a change in my output uh, uh, of the variables. Now, the system which is adjusting my process variable at uh, 16.008 kg per hour, 
and now it has uh, achieved uh, my steady state system here we can work uh, more on this but we have achieved our uh, set point here now the next step uh, that we need to look on is we can go to our uh, strip chart and for this controller that we were working on click on this and click on edit and this is the important step here now this go to the historical this is all the data that it has recorded uh, corresponding to my step uh, input change and how I know that if this is my output if you re remember it was set on 60 and if you keep going down I can see that uh, this is the change here so this is my 60 here the system process variable was on 13.73 and when I change my output to 70 it increased a little bit 14.07 which means it uh, tried to go and make the curve something like this and then after that it tried to increase a little bit more and then it achieved the steady state conditions so this is the way that you introduce uh, your disturbance and then you record your data now i strongly advise you to look on this data before you moving your next step if uh, you make a step change there is a possibility that you will not get an increase in then repeat your uh, this experiment again I always recommend uh, doing these, this step at least five times and see if you are having the change. The next step is we need to work on uh, and find out our gains uh, values from this data. What we need to do, let's export this uh, data, click on uh, save to .sv file and I'm going to save it on my desktop folder. So let's say that this is the history data for feed controller and we save this and let's go to the desktop here so this is uh, my now this is the data that we receive uh, from HiSys what we need to do let's uh, select them all and just make a little bit better representation here we go so what is happening here we have uh, three data variables which are in this system we set them to record 2000 points and uh, right now we have 180 data records available it is okay because uh, i can see that uh, the system achieved a steady state condition after some time now let's uh, look on this here we go so this is where the step change was happening and system after some time the system achieved the steady state conditions so this is perfectly fine if you don't have 2000 data points now there are two ways uh, that we can find the gain values from this there is a one way that i explained to you there is a second way that, and that one is uh, using a software what happens once uh, we refine this data a little bit i will show you what does mean you can input this data into a software which is called as a control station so this is their software pid loop tuning and from the software you can uh, the software can uh, provide you the k values for p i and d how it looks like so it was here i just keep it for you so this is the when you provide this excel sheet to control station software it will develop uh, this process variable curve for you as you can see this is my process uh, variable curve if it allow me to highlight uh, then I can show you better yeah okay so this is my process uh, variable curve and uh, over here I can choose the different options if I want to have the first order plus dead time second order plus dead time and once it uh, you click on the done the software will calculate your process gain it will calculate what is the first time uh, constant second time constant lead time and even the goodness of it how accurate uh, your data is right now it is 0.9338 this means these value calculated they are the best uh, fit values this uh, software is called as a control station i can again show you the website of uh, this software 
so this is uh, what uh, you can use in your analysis if you go in the product uh, here it is the tuner you can find out this software now i don't have this uh, software available in my this computer so we need to work on manually on this now let's come here and see before you uh, input data into your software just make sure you delete all the these rows because the software will not accept uh, any kind of the variable in it so you need to delete these rows and the one thing that uh, we can definitely delete is uh, our set point as you can see that this uh, variable the set point it is uh, not changing why because we were controlling our uh, output variable so you can delete it or leave it as such and what i'm going to do now we are uh, going to look on uh, how we work on this system over in the microsoft excel so let's uh, select this uh, data and just a few points before uh, there is a change we will keep only this data in our system Here we go. So let's uh, keep the data up, up to this point. So I can delete all these rows. I don't need them. As I can see that the step change was happening up to this point, which is okay. And we can also delete uh, further data after this set point. Where I should delete it? Once I have uh, this uh, seventy here. and i can see that uh, there is not much change uh, happening after let's say this point point 0.013 is the same as point 0.0125 so i can delete this data as well so we are left with the, our uh, this uh, system here which has uh, showing us uh, the output change with respect to our input now let's uh, go to the insert and we will draw this uh, curve here right click on this and let's select the data over the uh, legend let's add the first one is uh, we can add up our uh, pv process uh, variable data and this is what is my process variable data and uh, for the horizontal axis we have uh, this time here now one thing i just uh, want to do it before doing all of this let's delete them yes so i need to make this uh, data point uh, from zero it does not matter but it is more easier to find out our values so how you do that just uh, click on uh, equal sign copy this one and subtract uh, its absolute value and i just need to press uh, f4 here which is uh, this thing okay so and then drag it to the data point here that's it so now we have this uh, time that we can use in terms of second of course this is the time here that we will be using in our calculations so once we have uh, this uh, data available as you can see that i have my process variable and i'm interested in my op uh, output variable and i'm interested in what time these changes were made the next step is when you draw our uh, process reaction curve in order to draw the process reaction curve we will develop a graph between uh, process variable time and a separate graph for uh, output and the time you can also draw them on same graph but uh, i prefer to work on different graphs so let's uh, go and uh, right click on this go to the select data and click on this we are looking to include our process uh, variable here and the data that we have is uh, this one which is should go on your vertical axis and on the horizontal axis i am interested to have the time okay so this is a graph for my process variable i will draw one more graph for my output variable you can use the same graph but uh, the point is when you will draw it on the same graph uh, we will not be able to analyze this curve uh, in a more detail 
So let's say draw one more graph uh, for our OP this time. So right click on this, uh, go and select on data and this is for my OP output variable and the values uh, for this variables are from this to this and I just want to confirm that it is taking on the same time as I took for the process variable. Okay. So now we have uh, two graph uh, developed for uh, our analysis. Let's work on this one. This is what is your uh, process uh, reaction curve. Okay, if, if you want to increase this uh, size, and uh, we can just uh, make it more visible. And similar for this, let's make it more visible. And we can just expand it more. Okay, that's good, perfect. Now, as I mentioned, because we are not using the software, whatever we will calculate, it will be just an estimation. It will not be the exact uh, KC values, gains values, as I showed you uh, from the software that we have. This is what the software can give you if you export this Excel sheet into the software. So I'm doing it manually. There will be always some chances that uh, we can have some error or into this. So what we need to do, we need to draw a tangent line uh, to our uh, process uh, variable curve. So let's go to insert here and from here I can take this line. Now let's uh, try your best uh, to draw this line. And I can say that, okay, this is uh, kind of a perpendicular or the tangent, sorry, tangent uh, to my curve here. Okay. Now, according to whatever I explained you previously in these uh, slides here, we need to find out all these data. So the first step is we need to find out how much is uh, the total change in our system. So again, I go to my process uh, variable curve. This change is uh, starting at uh, 13.7309 and it is almost uh, going to 16 okay so that what is your uh, total change so let's say uh, record uh, this these things so that uh, we can do the calculations so my first thing that i want to find out from the graph is the total change my total change is equals to 16 minus 13.7309 so that is uh, turns out to be if i calculate this it is 16 i'm using my calculator here so that is uh, 2.2691 uh, again the units uh, will be kilogram per hour and i just want to show you again how i got these values so this is uh, if i uh, look on this this is the change is happening to start this is 13.730 almost and uh, I can achieve uh, my maximum up to this point which is uh, the 16 so this is what uh, I took as a difference here now the next is uh, we need to find out uh, according to our uh, previous explanation I need to find out 63 percent of this value so the next step should be 63.2 percent of uh, our 2.2691 I take it on the calculator and it turns out to be 1.434 kg per hour and then according to our previous slide as I mentioned we need to know uh, how much uh, will be the total so it will be starting value plus our change so this one will be my starting value starting uh, value plus uh, this change which is 1.434 and uh, now I can find out my starting value again this is my starting value 13.709 plus uh, 1.434 and now if I calculate this on calculator that uh, turns out to be 
kg per hour. Now, in order to find out what will be the corresponding time for this, we will go to our uh, process reaction curve and then we will find out what will be our time corresponding to this. Let's go here and find out. The best is you can develop uh, the function or the curve for uh, this uh, line or the data. You can use the data curve uh, data fitting and find out uh, what is the function of this curve and it will be more easier if you are using it uh, by this way. So uh, let me look on this value again. So corresponding to 15.16 I need to find out what is the value for uh, my time here. So if I look on uh, this value, uh, this is almost my 15.1 uh, value and uh, this uh, value correspondingly this is uh, almost uh, equal to 200 second. I can also check on this one. Yes, it is almost uh, equals to this 15.1. It is almost corresponding to my 200. So let's uh, work on this. So, in from the our process reaction curve, we get this uh, value for 200 second, which is equals to 3.33 minute. And now we can find out our tau, which uh, will be equals to 3.33. And minus, if I go back here, you can see that I need to find out what is the time. Uh, when the change start to happen again go to our uh, reaction curve and i can see that uh, this is the point where the change start to happen and it is almost uh, 180 seconds so let's come back here and we will do our calculations so i need to subtract uh, it from 180 which is in terms of second i need to convert that in terms of minute so it will be 180 divided by 60. so once i solve uh, this i will get the value of uh, 0 0.33 minute so that is basically your ta from your process uh, reaction curve okay now we also need to find out what is our dead time alpha this is my dead time in order to find uh, the process dead time i will go back to my reaction curve again uh, process uh, curve and uh, look at this one now so this is uh, 160 where i have this uh, point 160 as you can see and this is where the started so it 180 so my time should be my dead time is uh, it is 180 minus 160 so that is turns out to be 20 second which is equals to 0 0.33 uh, minutes so by chance our dead time and tau are the same so this is the value of your tau here. Now in order to find uh, the output which is our k here, as I mentioned you in my previous slides, the k is, uh, this is a change in, uh, the, the k is the change in output divided by the change in the input. And how do you find uh, this uh, change in output? We have already worked on it. If you recall here, this is your total change in the system. So this is uh, your total change. So that will be equal to 2.2691 over our change in the input. Now, if you recall uh, from our high sys, if I take you there, this uh, step change, we increase it uh, with an increment of 10. This uh, step change, we increase it with the increment of 10. So that is what uh, we need to mention here and let's go here i'm sorry about my handwriting i i try my best but uh, i think it should be improved more anyhow so once we calculate this uh, that uh, turns out to be 0 0.2269 or i can say that uh, my k value 
is uh, turns out to be 0 0.2269 minutes oh sorry the unit you know, should not be the minute for this because that is the uh, process gain for the change in output and input so my toy is there my dead time is there which is in terms of minutes of course and my k value of the process is given now we have all these uh, three parameters available so this means we have done the step number d here and now we can find out what will be the uh, tuning uh, parameters for our controller again we just need to plug in the values and find out uh, corresponding to what tuning method you are using you can use ziegler nicholas methods you can use cohen cohen method you can use ite method for this uh, uh, tutorial I'm going to use uh, Ziegler Nicholas and the PID controller so let me erase this and so that I can uh, explain them more so for the PID controller I have uh, in order to find the KC in order to find the KC for the PI controller PID controller using the Ziegler Nicholas method the KC value is 1.2 times tau over K times alpha. So let's uh, take it uh, to the next slide here. So my KC according to uh, Ziegler Nicholas method, that's what I'm using here. You can use any method and just make sure you mention which one you're using. I'm doing the PID controller. So my uh, KC according to that is 1.2 times tau over uh, K into alpha let me double check uh, this yes so that is uh, your K of uh, times alpha so this will be equals to 1.2 uh, times tau from our calculation the tau value is 0 0.33 0 point uh, 0 point uh, 0.33 divided by my k value from my previous calculations is 0 0.2269 and multiplied by alpha alpha from our calculations of uh, process reaction curve systems out to be 0.33 the same value and you multiply it by 0.33 now let me calculate this uh, on calculator 1.2.2269 so the k turns out to be 5.288 this is uh, my gain of uh, proportional controller because i'm also looking to find out uh, IFO integral so let's go back and look on the ziegler nicholas empirical method for the uh, second one which is the time integral the integral part it is two times of alpha so this one will be for the integral controller it should be your ti that is equals to two times of uh, alpha which is two times of alpha value is 0 0.33 it turns out to be 0 0.66 and similarly for the derivative my empirical correlation for the ziegler nicholas method is 0 0.5 times alpha so this will be uh, td this is 0 0.5 times alpha which is uh, 0 0.5 times alpha value is 0.33 and it turns out to be 0 0.165 so here are our results our controller gain is uh, 5.288 for proportional our uh, ti value for uh, integral is 0 0.66 and for the derivative our value is 0 0.165 so these are all the answers for which uh, we worked on now the last step uh, according to our uh, method here is we need to validate uh, our uh, parameters how we do that uh, let's go back to HISIS here what we do let's say uh, close this and uh, we can go back to our uh, simulation here so i go back to my tuner here again and uh, this is uh, let's make it an auto and we go back to tuning and now this is where we need to provide our uh, values 
so my kc value is uh, 5.288 it is uh, 5.288 uh, my ti value according to my calculations is uh, 0.66 so that is equals to 0.66 for ti again we are working on the minutes uh, which is good and you can also change the units uh, if you have a different units and the td value for the derivative part my value is uh, 0 0.165 so for the derivative it is uh, 0. Uh, 0.165 minutes so hit enter now this is how you find out the tuning parameters of a pid controller using hisis in the validation step what we need to do once you have uh, provided your uh, inputs you can uh, run uh, this controller and uh, see how closer we are uh, to our set point now one thing i want to mention before uh, validating this result that uh, in our system here if you look on uh, our system uh, if you look on our system here we have uh, Two more controllers so you, you need to based on our, your system you need to adjust uh, all the controllers before you can validate so I just did for the feed uh, FC controller so let's see here and uh, again when I want to run it in the dynamic mode everything should be in terms of uh, uh, auto controller so let's uh, reset our integral uh, integrator here because uh, it ran out of the time i believe in the start so we our time uh, it has been reset and now uh, we can run our simulation okay we can just uh, auto scale all these now as you can see that uh, my controller here my process variable it is a bit more closer to what I have before. So this means the control tuning parameter that I found, they are almost making a difference in my controller. As you can see that process variable is almost going towards my set point of 10 kg per hour. Again, you need to set all the controllers, you need to tune all the controllers and then work on this validation step so i hope uh, this helps it was a little bit uh, longer uh, lecture i believe but i'm sure this will help you if you have if you have any questions uh, you can email me good luck and thank you very much